of the high-level intergovernmental commission, Rocha, Venezuela. Mr. Ambassador Sergei, ambassador of the Russian Federation in Venezuela, dynamic active ambassador of the Russian delegation, Ms. Vice President, Mr. Minister of Economy, the Oil Minister, Tarek, Mr. Ambassador Carlos Faria, Ambassador of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela in the Russian Federation Moscow, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Health Minister. I am satisfied by the results of this work that shows how vital are the relationship, are the relationships between Russia and Venezuela, the integral relations of cooperation of work between the great Russia and the heroic homeland of Simón Bolívar. It is an extraordinary trajectory what we have seen in the last 21 years since that historical meeting between President and Commander Hugo Chavez and the President Vladimir Putin. They met in New York and they went to Moscow in 1999 and then they started to build a trust relationship, relations of, of work, of cooperation, of the human relations. And I can say right now that after all these years, humanity has seen in the last years the position of, the, of a new Russia, the emergence of a new Russia, of a democratic Russia, a powerful Russia, a Russia with a solid economy, with a strong industry, with a strong agriculture, and with a very strong people, a Russia that has taken its role of a global power in a multiple world, pluripolar world, which has positioned itself as a world of the 21st century. Dear Judy Borisov, humanity can register 7,000, 9,000 years of civilization since the first settlements in the planet and the first states were established. I am studying the state, state's theory because Captain Scalona started to study uh, right law and he gave me some books. I'm reading the book the state and the revolution of Lenin to understand the processes of the state emergence of the civilizations. And in 9,000 years, humanity have known the existence of empires, hegemonic empires. The first state which, were, which was created were states based on slave systems states based on the conqueror policy of colonization policies and we can say in its different schemes humanity have known 7,000 years of imperial civilization every people has its own its history we saw the arrival of the European empires of the Spanish empire of the Portuguese Empire, of the British Empire, 
which destroyed America and the Caribbean 500 years ago in 1492 began the, the greatest genocide known in history. It is said that in our continents there were 100 million people, 100 native people of a great cultural advance, of a great scientific human advances, with a pacific life. Boris, pacific life and with the arrival of the European empires meant that of all those 100 million inhabitants in the first 50 years of colonialism it was reduced to 3 million inhabitants a genocide that had never been seen before only compared with the genocide of Hitler against the European peoples and against the Soviet homeland in the 20th century and then to complete this formula the European empires brought more than 80 million slaves from Africa our grandparents this color you see here is the combination of the white the black my skin I have black blood my African grandpa grandfathers and of, out of 80 million out of those 80 million it is said that 40 million perished in the oceans when they were brought to our lands as slaves in chains 7,000 8,000 years of history of empires that they thought they had the the power to take over the lives, the work, the lands of the world's peoples. So you can check the map of the different empires and you will see the history of humanity. That's why when you see the fights of humanity for democracy, for independence, for peace, for equality against racism, for the international right, for strengthening the United Nations in the last 50 years. You say a better world is possible. You say hope is life. And today here, Borisov, March 30th, 2021, I can actually assure you, as constitutional president of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, after resisting the most powerful empire in the world, a better world is possible and we will build a better world together, Rocha, Venezuela and the entire humanity. I'm certain of that because this 21st century is our century it is a century of the world without wars without hegemony without imperialism it is the world where all the war apparatus should be destroyed it is a world as President Xi Jinping says our friend president of the People's Republic of China, it is the moment to build a state community common for the entire humanity. It is a beautiful concept. Of common destiny. It's a community for the common destiny of humanity. It is a beautiful concept that joins that concept with the, of the need to build a world without imperialism, without, world, without wars, a cooperation world, a world of respect to the international right. It is very simple. As the model 
as an exemplar relationship between a giant Eurasian, Eurasian country, world power, and a small South American country, which is immortal power, thanks to Bolivar and thanks to Chavez. How a giant, your Eurasian giant, and small country like Venezuela, to talk about equality, to talk about respect, searching for mutual benefits, searching for a better world. If Russia and Venezuela can do it, based on the mutual trust and in friendship, I am sure that the entire world can do it. Please say, President Putin, to continue fighting as the leader of humanity. From Venezuela, we send our hawks to that leader of the peace, Vladimir Putin, example of the perseverance in the fight for a mold, for a world without hegemony, for a world with peace. That is why the campaign in the Western world, in the Western media against President Putin, now they are attacking President Putin because Russia produced in a record time the vaccine against the coronavirus, the safest and more powerful vaccine in the world, Sputnik V.